what just happened? That looks weird, doesn't it? Don't worry, it's meant to do that. In fact, what you've just seen is one of the new S-Class's coolest party tricks. One of many party tricks, it should be said, but we'll get to the others in a few minutes. Because right now, I just want to focus on how amazing the new S-Class's four-wheel steering system is. Let's get into it. Now, it's not like four-wheel steering is a Mercedes invention. After all, Honda were the first to put that technology into a volume production car, and they did it way back in 1987 with the third generation Prelude. They were closely followed by Mazda and Nissan, and a whole bunch of other companies since then. Mercedes is relatively late to the party. However, the S-Class's rear steer hardware takes the tech to the extreme. In fact, the effect that it has on an S-Class's turning circle is so great that it can actually outturn a Mini Cooper. That's a compact hatch that's a fraction of the size. So how does it do it? Well, it's all about geometry, so get your protractors out. The real wheels on the new S-Class can turn up to 10 degrees left or right. Which might not sound like much, but when they're turned in the opposite phase to the front wheels, that is, if the front wheels are turning left, then the rear wheels are turning right, then it serves to magnify the turning effect of the front wheels markedly. The way it does that is by dramatically changing where the center of the car's turning circle is relative to the car itself. To help you visualize that, take a look at this illustration. On a car with a regular non-steerable rear axle, its center of rotation, its pivot point, turning center, whatever you want to call it, is always in line with the rear axle. The pivot point is right where the front axle lines intersect with the rear axle line. However, on a conventional steering system where just the front wheels turn, that pivot point is always going to be collinear with the rear axle line. Unless, of course, the rear axle lines can move around too. Take a look at this diagram. When the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction to the front wheels, they bring the pivot point forward and closer to the car, which not only makes the overall turning circle smaller, but also helps the car steer around objects that are right next to it. And that's what the S-Class does. An electric motor physically moves the rear wheels to actively alter the car's suspension geometry. That's why the system is known as an active rear steer system. Now, the 2021 Mercedes-Benz S-Class comes in two lengths. The standard length is 5.18 meters long, and the long wheelbase is 5.29 meters long. And both of those have the option of three rear axle setups. Not one, not two, but three. The standard one is a conventional setup. The rear wheels don't steer, it's just normal suspension geometry. There's no motors or anything going on there. On the second one, the rear wheels can turn by up to 4.5 degrees, while the third one is the special one that can turn up to 10 degrees. Now you saw what 10 degrees of rear wheel steering looked like at the start of this video. It's a lot. And to put that into context, most four-wheel steering systems only allow between 4 and 5 degrees of rear-wheel movement, and a lot of them get away with much, much less than that. In fact, the only car that I can think of that has offered more than 10 degrees of rear-wheel steering is a GMC Sierra Denali that you can see in this ad. Okay, so what is the actual effect? Well, for a long wheelbase all-wheel drive S-Class without rear wheel steering, its turning circle is 12.8 meters. That's pretty big, but it's a pretty big car. However, add the 10 degree rear wheel steering system and the turning circle shrinks by almost two full meters to just 10.9 meters. Two meters is not just the difference between making your turn and curbing your rims, by the way. It's the difference between making your turn and mowing over a fire hydrant. It's massive. And it gets even better than that. For a standard wheelbase S-Class with rear wheel steering, the turning circle becomes an even tighter 10.5 meters. Now, 
I brought up the Mini Cooper earlier, that car has a turning circle of 10.8 meters. So to consider that this gigantic Mercedes can outturn a tiny Mini, that's quite remarkable. And it shows just how transformative four wheel steering technology can be. And even among cars with four wheel steering, the S-Class is still quite remarkable. The Renault Megane RS has rear wheels that work the same way, but its turning circle of 10.3 meters is only slightly under that of the big Mercedes. Now, yes, there are also passive rear wheel steering systems, but they don't really work at low speed. They require some kind of dynamic load to actually move the suspension and alter the rear wheel geometry. They don't really work at parking garage speeds like the S-Class does. Now, four-wheel steering is usually something that shows up on performance cars and very little else. But to be honest with you, I think it makes the most sense in cars like the S-Class. There is an abundance of fancy hotels in Europe and Asia that have the most impossibly tight and twisty driveways. And the chauffeurs of those regions must surely be glad that the new S-Class is going to offer them a new level of parking lot agility. But what about when you're doing something other than parking? Well, at high speed, the rear wheels turn the same direction as the front wheels, though to a much lesser extent. Now that works the opposite way to its low speed mode by reducing the amount of rotation of the car and extending the turning circle to something like hundreds of meters. That enhances stability and comfort when doing things like changing lanes at highway speed. The car doesn't so much turn, it more crabs sideways from lane to lane. However, the 2021 S-Class will offer a whole lot more than just rear wheel steering. It is, after all, a brand new car. The W223 and V223 S-Class packs the most advanced driving aid hardware and software suite the Mercedes has developed to date. With the company claiming a self-driving capability that aligns with level 3 autonomy, that means you could safely remove your hands from the wheel and perform tasks other than driving at certain times, like during steady cruising or in heavy low speed traffic. Now this capability is gonna be rolled out in Germany first, but it could trickle through to global markets in the not too distant future. There's also a pseudo three dimensional head up display with augmented reality features a next generation LED headlamp system that can project warnings onto the road itself, active suspension that scans the road ahead for lumps and bumps and adjusts itself to suit. It also can be had with a self parking feature that works when nobody is in the car. And plus there is of course, an eye watering level of passenger comfort and luxury that you would expect for the S class. Now that's all pretty typical for an S-Class. It is, after all, the technology flagship of Mercedes-Benz. However, in my opinion, its most useful new feature is also the one that is the most mechanical and also one of the oldest technological concepts in the entire vehicle. It's swiveling rear wheels. That's all for this video, folks. I hope it educated you. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a like and also consider subscribing to my channel because I've got a whole bunch more videos just like this already in the pipeline and I would hate for you to miss out on them. Thanks everyone, thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next video. See you then, bye.